In this episode, we're going to find out about the MQTT PubSub network protocol. We're also going to look at some practical examples a little bit later on. In the MQTT model, there is the concept of brokers and clients. Brokers are typically servers, and you'll normally only have one of those. Clients, you can have many of them, and those are typically Internet of Things devices. In the last episode, we created a server using our Raspberry Pi, and we installed Mosquito on that server, which makes the Raspberry Pi server our broker. Then we have multiple IoT clients. In our case, we're using the ESP32. So we have IoT 1, 2, and 3. And those are the clients in this model. Now, the clients are able to send data across to the broker. And this is considered publishing the data. So data would come through from each of these devices. In this case, you've got data 1, data 2, and data 3 coming through being published to the Raspberry Pi server. The broker needs to know what this data is and where it's coming from. So with MQTT, there is the concept of topics. Topics allow the broker to know exactly where this data is coming from and what sensor it is or what reading it might be. So in this example, we have IoT1, which is up here, IoT1 slash sensor1. So this data1, the word data1 is being sent across to the broker under the topic IoT1 slash sensor1. Where this is helpful is if you want to subscribe to receive the information that's been sent or published, then all you need to do is subscribe to the topic IoT1 slash sensor1. So we can see that IoT2, the device, and IoT3, the device, have subscribed to the topic IoT1 slash sensor1. And that means that the word data1 has come across to each of these two devices. That is the entire concept of publish and subscribe when it comes to MQTT. But it's not just IoT devices that you'll be able to publish or subscribe data. You can do this with many other devices as well. For example, your computer or your laptop or your phone. And this information is coming across in exactly the same way. As soon as it's sent across from IoT1, as soon as it's published to the broker, it'll automatically get pushed through to these devices over here, as well as the other Internet of Things devices. And there's one last concept that we need to learn about here, and that is what happens on the Raspberry Pi server. Now, in the last episode, we installed Node-RED, and Node-RED is also going to be subscribing to that information. And that information comes through to Node-RED, and Node-RED allows you very easily to create some really cool graphics and really cool graphs and also enable you to not only subscribe to this information, but also publish it back to the server, which means that these devices, IoT 1, 2, and 3, can be controlled with your Node-RED interface. Again, this will make a lot more sense as we start working with Node-RED, but this is the basic concept of MQTT. Let's take a look at a practical use of MQTT. For this example, we're gonna to need to open up two instances of PuTTY, connect them both to your Raspberry Pi server. And the reason that we're opening up two instances is because on one side, we're going to be subscribing to the topic. And on the other side, we're going to be publishing to the topic. So on the right-hand side, we'll do the subscribing. And to do that, we use the command mosquito underscore sub dash V dash T for topic and the topic name. We'll use the same example that we used before, IoT1 slash sensor1. And close that off. So that's just going to sit there. The topic doesn't actually have to exist. It'll only show any information if we publish to that topic. So it's very forgiving. You don't have to initiate it. You don't have to set it up anywhere. Literally, that's all you need to do is just subscribe to a random number of characters. And as long as you publish to that random number of characters, then you'll get information. So let's do that on the side. The command to publish is mosquito underscore pub, the topic. So we're going to use the same topic we got on the right hand side. That's IoT sensor one. 
and then we're going to specify the message we're going to send across. So we'll say MQTT is cool. And on the right hand side, you can see instantly that message comes across. And we can put numbers in here, letters. There are some restrictions on how much data you can send across, but you should be fine for the majority of what you're going to be doing with this. So let's try change the topic. We'll make it IoT2 and see what happens. Let's change the let's change the text over here. And nothing happens. So the reason that is because we have only subscribed to IoT1 slash sensor one. However, there are some other ways you can subscribe so that it's a bit more forgiving or a bit more inclusive. And I will show that to you now. So we'll use the same command again. We'll use IoT1 as the base device. And then we're going to use the hashtag or the pound sign. And what that does is basically allows a wildcard. So that means that any topics that start with IoT1 slash will show up underneath here. So let's try that out. So IoT1 sensor one, there we go. So let's do that again. Uh, let's change the text. And let's change the sensor. So we'll, we'll call this uh, sensor five. And we can see on the right hand side that that comes up. So that's quite useful. If you have uh, sensors that are spanning in the hundreds, but typically I don't use the the wildcard because you should know what your what your various topics are, and it just helps save you issues down the line. But there might be use cases where the wildcard is useful. So I just want to show you I can put absolutely anything in here, and we can see there that it'll pop up on the right hand side. So that is the basics of MQTT. In the next episode, we're going to be taking a look at Node-RED and we'll start receiving some of the data that is being sent by our IoT devices via MQTT. And we're going to start doing some cool things with the data we receive. Until the next time, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and stay spicy. I hope that you're enjoying this series and that you're getting some value out of it. And if you are, please consider supporting me on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash chilichomp. And if you sign up there to support me, then you get access to my private Discord server where there are multiple channels that you can come have discussions around anything I talk about in my videos, things like growing and source making, and of course, electronics projects and automation. So it's a good place to come and ask questions if you have any questions around automation that you're doing for yourself or anything that I've talked about in my videos. And I really hope to see you there.